Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing songs to him. Sing of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. And then chapter Psalms chapter 107, verses 1 through 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Young person that had accepted the Lord as my Savior and, and began to want to do God's will and began to want to find what my purpose was in my Christian life, I would often ask men and women of God that I had great respect for, how do I know what the will of God is for my life? Now, what I, the question I was asking was, should, how will I know if I'm supposed to be a preacher? How will I know if I'm supposed to be a missionary? How do I know if I am supposed to uh, uh, be a school teacher or a doctor? Or what, how, how can I know God's will? And all through the early years of my life and as I entered Bible college and, I, and as I entered in uh, to other uh, professions of my life, I would always, when I found men and women of God that, that I had great respect for, I would ask them that question. How do I know about the will of God, uh, about who I'm supposed to marry? Uh, how will I know the will of God and, and, and the things that, that uh, uh, should I join the military? Should I uh, go to work at this place? How can I know the will of God? I was looking at the will of God as a, as a position that I should, in a place that I should be at. I was looking at the will of God as a, as a uh, fulfilling of a specific geographical location or a, uh, a person that, would, that I would work for or marry or be in, uh, have uh, friendships with. But you know what? I was missing a very important part of what the will of God was for me. And in this morning's message, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You all know what the will of God is for you? Well, the first thing that He wants you to do is learn how to give thanks. Now he is speaking to you. He's not speaking to the people that care nothing about God, the people that are not worshiping God, the people that curse God, the people that uh, have, have completely uh, set God out of their lives. He's not speaking about them being thankful. But he is saying you, as children of God, you who have met me, then I met the Master. When that day when you met the Master and the Lord Jesus came into your heart, his will became for you to learn how to be thankful. This is not just giving intermittent or limited thanks to God when things are going good. Or right before we eat, we bow our heads and we thank God for our food. Or maybe we're in a difficult situation and all of a sudden we get deliverance and then we're thankful to God. Now this is speaking about in everything, give thanks. To God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Well, if that's His will, why are so many Christians unthankful? 
Why are so many Christians, children of God that, that have met God, that know God, that have been blessed by God, that have experienced a uh, new birth, why are they unthankful? I'm going to give you some reasons I think that they're unthankful and then I want to talk to you about you and how you can be thankful and how you can begin to view things from a thankful attitude. First of all, some people, Christians, are unthankful or, and, and when I'm using this word unthankful, I'm not necessarily meaning, meaning a, a, a mean, selfish type person. Sometimes we have evolved to that. But I'm talking about the average Christian being unthankful. Sometimes we have not learned to be thankful because of the way we were raised. Maybe we had a lot of disappointments in our life. Maybe people uh, mistreated us when we were young. Maybe we were around people all the time that were uh, uh, complainers and negative and, and unthankful. And we just kind of picked up their uh, style of, of uh, conversation. Maybe... Uh, uh, so we, we, we received it because we were uh, grew up in a home where uh, we were not treated right. Or we were not treated in a way we thought we were. Maybe we were just raised in a family where we didn't feel loved. And that's a very important part of Thanksgiving is feeling loved. You know what our Lord and Savior experienced those feelings of rejection. Feelings of loneliness. Feelings of, well, nobody really cares about me. I'm just a, I'm just a number out here in the middle of, of, of space. And what is my purpose? What is my reason? The Lord Jesus felt that. And you say, well, I, I don't remember hearing him say that. Well, if you look back in Isaiah 53, 3, it says that he was despised and rejected. Not just people just didn't like him. They despised him. Have you ever had anybody just despise you? I, I, I've got some people that despise me. And rejected. A man of sorrows. Acquainted with the deepest grief. You say, I'm, I'm grieving. I've got grief in my life. Well, Jesus experienced the deepest grief. We turned our backs on Him. You and I, even today, we turned our backs on Him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Now Jesus heard this prophecy over 740 years before he was even born to come into this world. When he was in heaven, he heard Isaiah say, Lord, uh, when you come to earth, this is going to be the way people treat you. This is going to be the way life is for you when you're on the earth. It's not going to be like it is up here in heaven. It's not going to be fair. It's not going to, people are not going to just... Uh, 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 be glad that you're in their family and be glad that you're their friend. Yeah, this was a prophecy that Jesus knew about, but he chose to come to earth anyway. Now, I'm, I'm quite, I haven't developed that spiritual maturity that if I know that there's a, a place for me to go to and I know everybody's going to treat me mean, whether it's a family gathering or whether it is a social event or whether it is a, a uh, 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 some other type of gathering. Uh, and I know people are going to be mean to me and, uh, and, and make fun of me and talk bad about me. I'm just going to try to avoid going to that place. You know, I, I just don't like people to treat me mean. And I don't think you do either. But Jesus knew ahead of time that his purpose in life was to come to this earth and to die for you and me that we might be able to go to heaven and enjoy all the things that he was enjoying. How did he overcome this rejection? How did he overcome this feeling of being despised and hated and mistreated? Well, there's one word that can help us to overcome it also, and that is love. Jesus loved us. Uh, people, humanity, enough to do it. He took the attitude, instead of being angry at other people that were mistreating him, of, of getting even with them and treating them the way that they were treating him, he took the attitude of overcoming evil with good. He did overcome his feelings 
by focusing on what his purpose was. What's your purpose? We're going to talk about that in a little while. But what is your purpose on earth? And the Lord knew what his purpose was, and he knew that he was going to be rejected, but he understood that his father, God, was love, and that he came out of his father. He was part of the Trinity, and that, that his purpose was to come and demonstrate his love. Listen to this scripture in Romans 5, 7, and 8. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, perhaps for a good man, maybe someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, and then while we were yet sinners, while we were still sinners, before we even knew who God was, Christ died for us.